to introduce um, another presenter, the last presentation from this webinar, Dr. Manjur Hassan. Um, he is an assistant professor at the University of uh, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Maritime University, Bangladesh. Um, he completed his PhD uh, from Ocean University, China, with particular reference to maritime delimitation um, uh, in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, so uh, he has published some interesting papers in this area of research, and um, he also has the experience um, uh, teaching um, in this area of law, particularly international law and law of the sea. So now, um, and also he holds a postgraduate degree at LLM uh, and also LLB honors from Russia University, Bangladesh. Um, now I'm uh, inviting uh, Dr. Hassan to present um, his uh, uh, paper. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dao Hassan, sir. Uh, respected professors, distinguished speakers, stakeholders from different uh, countries concerned the Eastern Mediterranean Sea, and dear participants, uh, a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, at first, I would like to thank my uh, three predecessors, uh, distinguished professors, for their uh, excellent deliberation in different maritime boundary dispute issues. Actually, my uh, presentation, uh, the scope of my presentation is not any particular area of disputes. Uh, my presentations will be a common issue for its, uh, its being faced by different maritime nations all over the world. So my uh, topic uh, is maritime boundary dispute issues and potential solutions. Actually, I will discuss about the potential solutions of maritime boundary disputes other than the formal or the legal mechanisms of which has been stated in our uh, unclosed uh, United Nations Charter. My presentation will be uh, uh, a common issue uh, and uh, potential solutions of maritime boundary disputes. So uh, the issue of which will be covered in my presentation uh, are maritime boundary dispute, reasons for margin dispute, issues for prolongation and settlement, potential ways to resolve the dispute, and uh, finally, I will uh, discuss about the significance of settlement. So it's known to all, uh, what is maritime boundary dispute? Actually, maritime boundary dispute uh, is a dispute relating to demarcation of different maritime zones between coastal states. You know, and the, uh, the countries are uh, concerned uh, different uh, bay or oceans are very much concerned about their economic growth, about their uh, uh, marine resources. So when the countries or the major nations uh, are concerned about their marine resources, they, uh, they claim the different maritime zones uh, and uh, that is why the maritime disputes uh, is emerged uh, between uh, opposite or coastal state, opposite and adjacent state. So uh, here I will uh, show you uh, a list of maritime bound disputes uh, by 2020. Uh, there are 460 uh, maritime bound disputes all over the world by 2020. Uh, among them, uh, 280 a maritime boundary dispute has been settled uh, uh, by adjudication arbitration or uh, international tribunal course. Uh, so this is uh, the list uh, all over the world and the continent basis maritime boundary disputes you can see. And in Africa, there are 92 boundary disputes, Asia 102, Europe 97, North America 89, Oceania 50 in South America 30. So I want to uh, uh, present uh, why the maritime boundary disputes actually uh, emerged. I think, and you know that mainly there are the two reasons uh, uh, for which the maritime boundary disputes uh, uh, has emerged between uh, different maritime nations. One is Overlapping claim on different maritime zones like territorial sea, exclusive economic zone, and continental shelf within or beyond uh, 200 nautical miles. 
For example, uh, you know, uh, the first maritime boundary disputes which has been settled by eight laws is Bangladesh and Myanmar's maritime boundary disputes, which has been settled in 2012. In these disputes, uh, there are four issues of uh, uh, disputes. The first one is the overlapping claim uh, on territorial sea, and e is it continental shelf within or beyond the other nautical mile. And the fourth issue has been uh, raised during the settlement process before uh, tribunal. That is the tribunal, whether the tribunal has jurisdiction to settle uh, continental shelf beyond 200 nautical mile or not. The, uh, that, that, uh, that was fourth issue of, of between Bangladesh and Myanmar case. And another case in the same region, in the same bay, the Bay of Bengal is Bangladesh versus India made in boundary dispute. Here, uh, uh, as like Myanmar's dispute, the overlapping claim was over there. And another issue is sovereignty claim on South Talputi Island, which is uh, located, which is located in Bay of Bengal. And another uh, grounds is controversial sovereignty claim on island or islands. Uh, as I discussed uh, in Bangladesh and India uh, case, there was an island which is called South Talputi Island. The Bangladesh and India, both countries had the controversial sovereignty claim on the uh, island. And another one is the South China Sea disputes. You know, there is a, a complicated disputes uh, is going on in the South China Sea. Uh, because the six parties, China, Taiwan, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Brunei, Malaysia, all the parties claim the different islands of Spartly Islands groups. So uh, there is a sovereignty claim over this uh, controversial island, Spartly Island. So this is the another grounds of maintaining boundary disputes. So let's uh, point out the issues uh, for prolongation and settlement process. Why the maintain boundary disputes uh, 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 not uh, settle in a peacefully or rapidly? What are the grounds? Let me point out some grounds. That is, number one is absence of bona fide intention among disputed parties. If the disputed parties uh, uh, have not any bona fide intention to settle. So no, no instruments, no law, no conventions will help you to settle this process. At first, the disputed parties have to have the bona fide intention to settle their disputes. Number two is absence of bilateral talks. Most of the mighty nations uh, 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 it doesn't give the disputed issues a priority basis. So due to less uh, priority and the maritime boundary disputes uh, is um, are not settled in a rapid way. A third one is disagreement and means for settlement. You know, the disputed nations may, uh, cannot raise any fruitful uh, solution to take the means for settlement. There's what will be the means for settlement? That is, uh, it is a, a legal means, a judicial process, or negotiations, or conciliation, or arbitration. So most of the nations cannot raise any fruitful agreement to uh, accept the means for the settlement. Fourth one is disagreement and method of delimitation. This is one of the important issues uh, for which and the maritime nations, maritime nations uh, cannot settle their dispute. Whether that is equidistance, that will be equidistance or equidistance. This is the warning. Uh, questions will be raised between the maritime nations. So the, the disputed parties uh, cannot raise any agreement to accept whether it is equidistance principle or equitable. And the fifth one is weakness of international law. It is known to all the international law is uh, uh, a weak in nature. It has no any binding force. Uh, you, you can see in the South China Sea and the uh, arbitral tribunal, 
uh, uh, the, the award in 2016 between China and Philippines arbitration. So China didn't take part in the uh, arbitration process. So uh, the court cannot uh, bind to follow the award which is given in the uh, arbitration process. So it is a common issues that the means for settlement, you know, uh, uh, we know uh, all the, what are the means for settlement. I just show you um, uh, for the sake of my presentation. You know, uh, Article 33 of United Nations Charter is uh, uh, it's talk about the formal process for uh, settle any kind of dispute between states. And Article 287, uh, state uh, the process uh, for uh, this maintain dispute settlement. So, uh, in our UNCLUS, section one and two of part 15 uh, has, have dealt with the formal process for the settlement of maritime boundary disputes, uh, which is classified into two parts. Uh, one is non compulsory procedure, uh, which are negotiation, conciliation, and mediation. Uh, number two is compulsory procedure. There's an arbitration, International Court of Justice, International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, Commission of the Limits uh, of the Continent itself. This is the formal process, you know, all uh, of pro, uh, by which any maritime nations can settle their maritime disputes. So my, uh, uh, actually my uh, topic, my presentation is potential solutions. In most of the cases, and the disputed parties uh, are failed to raise an agreement to follow the uh, formal process, formal means for the settlement. Then what will be or, or may be the solutions for settlement of the disputes? Here I, um, I will show you the five uh, potential solutions. Number one is effective bilateral efforts under international law. It may any bilateral effort, which is uh, settled, which is agreed both the parties which are in the disputes. Number two is diplomatic initiatives under a particular treaty. If the maritime nations or disputed parties uh, are failed to raise any agreement to follow the formal process, to follow the judicial process or negotiation or conciliation, they can make a particular treaty to resolve the disputes. Number three is Joint Survey Commission. This is this may be the uh, one of the important uh, uh, means for settlement because uh, you know in the South China Sea the dispute is very complicated because this is a multi-party dispute and uh, uh, the disputes in, in Eastern Mediterranean as in South China Sea these are very complicated. So if the parties uh, fail to uh, agreed to follow the formal process, then they can uh, make a joint survey commission. This commission will help you to raise the process for the delim delimitation or any kinds of maritime boundary disputes. The another one uh, may be missile development scheme. You know, uh, in Australia and uh, Indonesia, they will uh, they they made a uh, missile development scheme in Timor Gap. So, in present, uh, disputed area, disputed parties can follow this process. And last one is joint marine peace park. In complicated uh, maritime boundary disputes, this uh, means also maybe the one of the most important means to settle the maritime boundary disputes. Uh, as we know, the American Canada, uh, they they made this kinds of uh, marine peace park to settle their disputes. So this uh, or maybe this process may be the uh, potential solutions other than uh, other than judicial or the formal process for delimitation. So what are the significance of settlement? So we know any kinds of dispute between the states um, can destroy the uh, uh, political uh, harmony. And international relations and destroy the peaceful coexistence between the states or among states. So uh, all, all kinds of disputes should be settled in a peaceful way. 
So the significance of uh, uh, the boundary settlement is uh, are every coastal estate needs a defined maritime boundary uh, to explore and exploit their marine resources. If you have, if you don't have any defined maritime boundary, then you cannot explore your marine resources from different maritime zones. Uh, for defined maritime zones and uh, uh, for exploring and exploiting marine resources, if you have the dispute with opposite or existing coastal state, then you cannot move to explore or exploit your remaining resources and ensuring political harmony. So in our, it is, uh, in our world, the peaceful uh, coexistences are very much necessary uh, for each other. So if you have any dispute, then the political harmony, the peaceful coexistence can be destroyed. And most important is sustainable ocean governance. We know in this world, there, uh, uh, there has been a new term of economy uh, has been introduced, which is blue economy. So uh, the maritime nations are blessed uh, uh, because of their main resources. So if you cannot settle your disputes, you cannot get a defined maritime boundary or maritime zones, and you cannot uh, ensure your sustainable ocean governance, which is very much important for blue economy, for economical growth for maritime nations. So uh, these are the significance of uh, maritime boundary dispute settlement. So uh, and these are my, uh, I will stop my presentation. Uh, thank you very much again, uh, Professor Dad Hassan and others dignitaries, thank you. Uh, thank you, Manju, for your um, interesting presentation and providing an overview of uh, dispute settlement procedure under the Law of the Sea Convention. And also, you highlighted some, uh, you know, some uh, issues that need to be resolved, and also how we can achieve that, and how why uh, we need to resolve those uh, maritime delimitation for the sake of uh, sustainable ocean governance. Thank you. Um, now, we. Uh, we have uh, finished the presentation part, and you can we all uh, you know appreciate and understand that uh, it's an important uh, area of research, and also it's important, uh, particularly in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea region, and uh, not only legal methods. Uh, we all know that there are, there is a significant and also inherent weakness of international law, but we can solve this problem for the sake of our current generation and future generation go beyond our national interest, national prerogatives. So, and diplomatic solution is also important that we need to consider an extensive and increased dialogue could be uh, uh, also uh, uh, could be uh, considered very seriously. And the papers that we, uh, we saw from, uh, you know,